there is a democratic deficit surrounding the march of English devolution, and I think that is well established now. There's been a lack of democratic consideration to the sort of process by which the deals have been developed. The starting point hasn't been the kind of the principles or the values of people in a local area and then kind of coming up with structures based on that. But I also think there's been a real lack of consideration to, to the democratic substance of the new arrangements. So for example, are we thinking about if, if a voting system that tends to produce one party dominated local governments and, and, and weak oppositions in a lot of areas, a lack of scrutiny, is that right if you're going to have a lot more powers held in local levels? Is anyone going to vote for a, a regional mayor if it's been kind of given to you? Here's some more democracy, take it. The question is, what can we all do about that? And I just want to spend a couple of minutes talking about a practical initiative called Democracy Matters that the Electoral Reform Society and many others have been involved with. And this was just a, a kind of a test run, really. It comprised of two deliberative assemblies, one in, in the Sheffield area, one in the Southampton area. And I think they've been a good example of just how deeply a representative sample of citizens will deliberate on the big questions of where power lies locally. And I think suggests they could be a kind of a forum or a model for a wide range of other topics and, and areas, another way of doing things. So where did the project come from? Well, in the aftermath, the immediate aftermath of the, the Scottish referendum, the Electoral Reform Society and many others began to campaign for a constitutional convention. And this was based on a really fundamental idea that if we're going to be looking at big questions of territory and power, these can and only should be settled with the fullest involvement of, of citizens and of, of people. And it felt like there were a lot of kind of closed doors initiatives, not least the Smith Commission, which kind of there was incredible sort of breadth and depth of involvement of the Scottish people in the referendum. And then the next stages went very much kind of behind closed doors. So it was really, really a kind of response to that. Uh, the question very quickly came up, what is a constitutional convention? And it really felt that we needed to do a sort of a show and tell, a little bit of a sort of a mini convention. And I guess another bit of the context was there's sort of lots and lots of experimentation in democratic involvement going on all over the place at the moment. So we had that at the same time as all the kind of constitutional cards have been thrown up in the air as well. So it's kind of, kind of quite an interesting convergence of two things happening. Of course, we then had the general election and a government without any sort of wish to have a UK-wide constitutional convention. So the game had moved on, but we did have this very live event of devolution deal, something very, very concrete and on the table for the citizens in our assemblies to get to grips with. So the simple aim, uh, gather 45 broadly representative citizens together in two different parts of, of England. One would be a kind of a pure model, citizens only, and the other one would be two-thirds citizens and one-third elected representatives. That was the South model. And I was really struck with the RSA report that one of the themes that seems to be coming out of this is what can work well is the sort of the co-production. It's that the councils in partnership with citizens, it, it, it's tackling really difficult issues together rather than, you know, the council sets up a democratic means or a committee or something like that. And that was something I guess we were testing out as well, which is what happens when side by side people in an elected role and not in an elected role actually have to think through the issues and perhaps change their minds or change each other's minds even. And the issue is... Where do you want power to lie? How do you want power to be organised in your local area? But very specifically, there were Devo deals on the table in each area, so there was sort of something specific to be given as well. And the format was deliberative and it was phased, you know, a bit of a learning phase. This is, you know, a chance to kind of learn about the complexities of the status quo and of local government, and then moving on to sort of taking evidence and, and hearing about the different options and sort of deliberation and then some decision making about what they wanted to see. So it was very miniature because we only had two intensive weekends with the people who came. So I suppose what we were trying to do was to really get underneath the surface of what can actually happen when you do give people a bit more time and space and structure and knowledge and support. And we also wanted to give people that chance out in, in the open a bit more, if you like, to say what they actually thought about the deals on the table or, or if they might like kind of other models as well. We found that the kind of strength and the depth of the engagement was very high 
once people were through the door. So, you know, pretty much 100% retention from one weekend to the next. But it's getting through the door, isn't it? So there are real issues around getting a representative sample. In some ways, we did well. In other ways, we, we really struggled with that. And I think that's a really big issue. And what do we mean by representativeness when we're talking about public and really deep sort of public involvement? And actually, anyone who came to the assemblies will absolutely see, for real, everybody has an ability to deliberate on a complex constitutional matter if the people around them bother to give them the tools, the knowledge, the support. So it's been really, really good having a kind of a live example we saw people's kind of uh, confidence knowledge grow the quieter people becoming more confident so they've got quite a sort of transformational quality and also a lot of agility as well so the assemblies were quite dynamic so people one of the assemblies they said actually we need to talk about scale in our area then we want to talk about the structure and the model so I thought that was really kind of telling different ways of bringing uh, pol politicians and citizens together the, we're still doing a lot of the kind of analysis so there's lots more to um, to sort of reflect on. Uh, I'd sum up by saying I think it did demonstrate people's ability to tackle a complex constitutional task in hand in a very pragmatic fashion. So even if people didn't like the deals, they said we think the councils should carry on fighting for something good. But they also really strongly said we want kind of future involvement in this as well. That was a very sort of powerful message. One of the big questions is that central government seems to have kind of outsourced responsibility for the democratic aspects of devolution to local councils. Local councils, for different reasons, are struggling then. It's seems in a bit of a straitjacket, tight timescales, conditional deals to kind of open the doors and let the public in. I think we know from our pilots that the answer to the question, who is able to deliberate in depth on complex questions of localism and power, citizens can.